I'm doing it because I wish I could go back and look at those days when we were just starting. And so I'm really excited about the idea of capturing the journey and just having that. And I think it's gonna be really cool to be 75 or 80 one day, go on my YouTube channel and flick on a vlog from when I was 30. And my kids were young, me and my wife were young. It makes you emotional even to think about that scenario, but. Yeah, I'd say the long-term goal is to accomplish what I want to accomplish in life, and I'm a firm believer that in order to do that, the only thing between you and there is just becoming the type of person that deserves those things. And I have some pretty big goals. You know, I want to have complete financial freedom by 40, and I have all these other health and wellness and jiu-jitsu goals. And when I think about the person that deserves the life that I'm aiming at, it's definitely somebody who's disciplined and wakes up early and reads and trains and moves their body. Sometimes you're the hammer and sometimes you're the nail, especially in jiu-jitsu. And it's funny how one day, you know, yesterday I felt technical and strong. And today I felt like everything I did was wrong and I was just getting dominated. And it's funny because you can roll with the same people one day and you get the upper hand and you feel smooth and it feels easy. And then the next day that same person, it feels impossible to do anything to them. But that's the beautiful thing about jiu-jitsu. It's like first thing you do, you're going and you're training, you're moving your body, you're sweating, and you're basically, in a watered down way, you're fighting somebody um, and training for that. So there's something that just feels spiritual about training in the morning. It just feels good to be part of a group of people who are willing to wake up at 6 a.m. and go and work out really hard, but you know, wrestle and fight each other and do jiu-jitsu. It's a, it's a good group to be a part of. In the mornings when I do jiu-jitsu, I have a pretty good routine. Water, coffee, reading, jiu-jitsu, and then I go home. First thing I do is get right in the ice bath before I think about it too much. The ice bath, like to be cliche and corny, like every person on the internet, the ice bath is great for life. One, you feel amazing, but two, the hardest part is always getting in, and then as soon as you're in, you're like, oh, it's really not that bad.
Say hello. Who's that? Can you wave? Say hi. He says dada. He says thank you. In a good way. Yeah. This is Ruby. Say hey. Say hi. Alright, Luke. Luke is like, what's going on? Come on. My mommy finished. Go say the Halloween. I'm popping the shower and we're ready to rock. Oh, they're downstairs. Can you do a scream? Okay. We're gonna go downstairs. We're gonna bring Daddy to his car. Come on, Luke. Babe, if you want me to, if it's easier for me to Uber, I can do that too. No, I wanna go. Okay. So here at Brentwood MD, excited about to go over the blood work and do all that, which will be really interesting. I'm curious to see about like testosterone levels and just overall health and all that. But I mean, what a vibe is it in here? Like very different than the normals, uh, normal doctor's office, that's for sure. Hello, how are you? Great, man. Well, how just are you? Telling, uh, good. I know you know a little bit, obviously, about what we're about, but we're very proactive and very preventive. And that comes with some strings attached where yeah. you do wonder, like, you know, hey, what am I going to uncover if I really go hunting and yeah. searching? And so you got to be ready for the results yeah. before you give the test. Yeah. So The biggest thing is just to feel good. Yeah. Feel good and be sharp. Yeah. That's the main thing. It's like I'm... You know, obviously still building and scaling a company and I'm in the trenches with that. But there's a few things that have been challenging for me. Um, one is just like ADD like symptoms, brain fog type like symptoms. Mm -hmm. So seeing what I can do naturally to kind of hone that in a little bit. Yeah. And then the second thing has been um, just like getting to a um, body fat percentage I'm happy with mm -hmm. and like getting lean and healthy in that regard. And so it's something that I've struggled with and it could just be habit change, which I've been working on over time and feel like making some progress on, but trying to scale is difficult. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it felt like from $0 to 2.5 million was like, I'm sure it was really stressful, but maybe I was just younger, but it seemed a lot, I don't know, easier. Mm -hmm. And now trying to scale has been what's been challenging. So yeah, it's just uh, the scaling to getting the leadership team going, trying to get it from like lifestyle business where like me and my business partner can pretty much like run it and we're doing the work and we're making good money and it's smaller, it's easier to, mm -hmm. it's running itself and it's like a real business. Mm -hmm. That has been, uh, since we've decided to do that about two years ago, it's been tough. Yeah. Yeah, I think that I'm trying to, to trying to like make peace and fall in love with the journey and like the process mm -hmm. and like okay mm -hmm. let me learn to love to do the work and not like what i'm working towards the end goal i'd say like the mental clarity and then like just healthy body and physique and uh yeah energy levels mm -hmm. i love your thoughts on optimizing um i mean obviously if you've talked to aaron you know we're we're big on that kind of thought process and i love being able to do that with young people in their 30s you know because i think 
I think as we look at that longevity piece, looking at how big and long our health can be, the 30 to 40s, if we just had to separate it based on a decade, is where you can put in a lot of good effort mm -hmm. to put yourself in the best position yes. for success. Your profession's going great, family's good, but the stress is starting to get higher. And part of that may be natural mm -hmm. as you're growing a business, growing a family, how much could we release if we better address some of the attention and focus? Naturally, we look at sleep, we look at nutrition, we look at fitness, and do the best we can in our day-to-day -day habits and see what kind of ground we can gain with those symptoms. Yep. Um, and then if medicines are needed, of course, we plug them in and we tack them on to a solid foundation. Um, what I'll do is just kind of really stay in touch with you. And I'd say, let's look at maybe the next two months as a good window. Mm -hmm. And I'll check in with you in between. But let's mentally be thinking, let's circle back up with either a visit here in the office or a, maybe a phone call to really talk about how you've responded to two months of making these changes that we've talked about. And then we'll reassess okay. and we'll look at, okay, well, what do we need to do different? What do we need to give more time? What do we need to add? And try to continue to keep those big areas of attention, mental fog, clarity, and energy as the top two things we're trying to resolve. Okay. That was awesome. Uh, we were just talking about it in the elevator, but much different than any other doctor's appointment I've ever been to. It was like two hours and all about lifestyle goals, optimization, and super comprehensive, but very impressed, excited for it. Got some clear next steps. I mean, I'm going back to the animal-based diet, which will be good. Um, get my sleep more regular and increasing cardio, which I'll be doing as I train for this competition. So that's the takeaways and overall healthy. So that's good. What did you learn? Um, all my, I learned all my blood work looks great. Oh, really? Which is good, yeah. My testosterone <laughs> is a little bit low. Okay. But like not concerning low, but like... What about, your, what about your vitamin D? Vitamin D was great. Huh. Yeah. Um, everything was, all my blood work was really good. And he talked a lot about just like my goals and I was like, I feel tired all the time and I feel like I have brain fog and I can't focus. And also I want to be freaking shredded. I do a guy named Neen Williams program, and he is a professional skateboarder. And so it's a cool story. Like, got sober, got healthy, wanted to skate longer. So it's kind of functional bodybuilding s, but it's great. It's very athletic oriented. A lot of hypertrophy work, and I love. I can just throw the app on, and it keeps pace. It tells me when to go. It tells me when to rest. It makes it super easy. You know, I've been doing it for a few years now. Love it. I try to do weightlifting like four times a week, maybe five times a week. And then just depending on how jiu-jitsu goes and how my energy is, usually I will do two days. So I'm going to get back on the animal-based diet. Um, I was on it for about six, seven months right after we filmed with George St. Pierre for a company, one of our clients called Heart and Soil, which I took their beef organs this morning. And I was really inspired by what GSP was saying what everybody was saying about what the diet had done for them. So I did it. I got awesome results. My mood was great. Um, I can struggle with anxiety and depression at times and just mood swings and I uh, had none when I was on the animal-based diet. My energy levels were awesome. And I don't know why I broke it. I think I took a trip to New York or something and I was like, of course, I'm going to eat pasta and pizza, but I just didn't get back on it. But I'm going to get back on it now after the doctor's appointment we were just at where they recommended it. So today uh, I got... 
1.75 servings of ground elk, and then I'm going to eat about what looks to be 125, 150 grams of blackberries, and that's going to be lunch. So um, it's a little bit lean. I'm trying to cut weight for that jiu-jitsu fight that I signed up for like a dum-dum at 168, and I'm 182 as of this morning. And so when I signed up for it, I didn't realize it was already halfway through October and the competition is on November 16th. So I thought I had like almost two months and I was like, I had at least 20 pounds in two months. And also in my head, I was like, all right, fighting at 168 and 182 right now. So I'm basically 170. So I need to lose like 10 pounds. But really, once you factor in the gi and everything else, like I need to get down. If I'm going to fight 168, I have to be probably 163. Uh, natural weight and then with the gi on it'd be about 168 so 20 pounds in a month is a tall order so I'm gonna try my best to cut down but worst case I'll just up my weight class um, you know a week out if I'm not able to get down that low but yeah that's lunch for today um, try it if you've ever thought about the animal based diet it's basically meat fruit honey raw milk raw yogurt cheese uh, some people will even have sourdough on it as well and so it's not as restrictive as carnivore because you can have carbs and it's actually really saturating and fun to eat this way it's just difficult logistically you can't just run and grab something you have to prep it yourself or go somewhere where you know you can get steak chicken you know etc so So we're at the Cumberland HQ here in the Nations in Nashville, and we've been in this office for uh, two years or something. If you've been on the channel for the fashion stuff, you've seen this as a backdrop, but we're here. Uh, we had the morning out and about with the doctor's appointment and that sort of thing, so we didn't come straight to the office like I normally do, um, but now I'm here for the afternoon for a normal afternoon's worth of work. So it's going to start off at 1 p.m. I have coaching with Dan Martell, so that'll be for an hour. Really enjoying that program. And then from there I have a one-hour long call rundown with my director of digital strategy, Max. And so we just hired him recently. He was a really big addition for us. And he's helping with my podcast, uh, which I've recorded 10 or 11 episodes of, but I haven't launched yet. So he's helping me with launch strategy, etc. And then I have a one-to-one -one with Adam, um, who is one of our producers here. So he was one of our account directors and business development guys, but he's transitioned to more of a creative producer role. So I have a quick 30-minute one-on-one with him. And then I have some just proposals and busy work to get done. Um, but that's what the afternoon will look like. So a lot of, a lot of Zoom calls. But the reason we started Cumberland and the reason that we're still eight years later running it, trying to grow it and scale it is – for me, what personally fuels me the most is I love the work. I love video. I love documentary work especially, and I love storytelling. So I love all of that, the visuals, the stories, love it. But I think more importantly for me, what gets me going is just creating opportunity for myself and the people I love around me. So that's definitely what keeps me going is how do I create more and more opportunity for our employees, some of which are family, some of which are friends, some of which have become friends, and continue to get cooler projects, bigger projects, uh, better benefits, more income opportunity. Yeah, super excited. And it's stuff like that that like really gets me going. Like to be able to start from where we started, which was like literally Mike and I and one other business partner at the time, um, shooting whatever we could, just on like, you know, A7S2s from restaurants on roofs for home service companies. And to be able to be in the spot now where we get to work with People like Amazon, people like GE, people like Shell, um, like National University, Smith & Wesson, of course, um, and many more. It's, it's pretty surreal and it's pretty crazy. And now to be doing a full-length documentary series is also like super crazy. And so it's really cool to see how the team has grown and evolved over time. And yeah, we don't plan on stopping anytime soon. It's part of why I'm making this vlog. The whole purpose for this vlog is very selfish, honestly. I guess there's a selfless part of it, but it's mainly selfish. And it's just that whether or not people watch it, I don't really care. It'd be cool if people did and I could get a bunch of brand deals and all that sort of thing. But that's not what I'm doing it at all. Um, I'm doing it because I wish I could go back and look at those days when we were just starting and relive that and 
have that time capsule of those moments and those trials because it's so easy to forget what it was like. And I'm a very sentimental and nostalgic person. And so I'm really excited about the idea of capturing the journey and just having that. And I think it's going to be really cool to be 75 or 80 one day and retired and, you know, hopefully in a sunny sunroom somewhere with a cigar and be able to go on my YouTube channel and flick on a vlog from when I was 30. And my kids were young and me and my wife were young and we were still building, right? Um, makes you emotional even to think about that scenario, but we're all going to be there and I know that time flies. And then the, the selfless part of it is like, I want that for my kids too. Um, I didn't have a lot of like strong family stories or a tree or anything like that, or even photos and stuff growing up. And of course you want to give to your kids what you don't have. And I hope that it'll be meaningful for them one day, whether it's after I pass away and they're grown adults and maybe they're even 70, 80 and like this YouTube channel will still be there and they can go back and watch it and relive some of those things and even get to see themselves as children and see what the family looked like as children, I think will be super special. And of course that's like for them, but even their kids to be able to see like, Hey, this is what, grandpa did and how he lived his life and how we were raised like I think that's super cool and so my goal for this vlog is to keep it as unfiltered as completely real and authentic as possible and so I'm hoping I can just document what I'm doing and capture that savor those moments and if it's valuable for somebody else then awesome if you can learn from my mistakes and not have to make the same ones as an entrepreneur as a father as a friend as a somebody who's trying to you know, be whole and healthy and well, then that's great. And I think that's awesome. I know I've learned a lot from other YouTube channels that I followed for a long time. So, but I'm excited for the journey. I'm excited to start documenting this and to start sharing this and just storing it on this channel and to be able to look back one day, many, many years and remember and be able to remember and understand what I was really going through as I went through it. All right, it's about five o'clock, back home. Pretty standard time for me to get home. Usually I get home a little bit earlier, honestly. But the best part of the day is coming home and the kids are running around excited to see you. So we'll go inside, hang out with the fam, do some dinner, and then bath time, rosary, bedtime, and that'll be it. Big Bang! Say hi, Tyson. Say hi. What you doing, buddy? She's a lot more like high key than Luca in that way. Mm -hmm. Like Luca will roll with the flow. But Ruby likes her routine and her certainty. Oh, well, she's younger. Not cool. 
cool at all. Touch the bushes. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. Ruby, what is he doing? She's looking at him like he's crazy. You ready for bed, buddy? Hmm? No! Can you say goodnight to your friend Isaac? Say night night. Can you say night night? Oh, you can't, Isaac. Say goodnight. Say goodnight, Isaac. Bye bye. See you next time. All right, so the kids are down. The nighttime routine is complete. Um, we've been really enjoying the nighttime routine. That's one thing about having kids that's been awesome. Is it's so fun to do dinner, walk, uh, bath time, rosary, and then bedtime. And it's a real strong routine we do every single night. And so that's been really nice and sets it up, sets the day up well because it's seven now and we feel like we've prayed, we've wrapped, dinner's done. We'll probably just clean up the kitchen and hang out for a bit and then go to bed. So yeah, that's a day in my life as in this current season. It's pretty hectic. There's a lot going on with two young kids, uh, growing business that we're trying to scale um, and all the other stuff that's going on. So that's it uh, for this day in the life. I'll do more of these in the future, cover some more topics, dive deeper into the business, lessons learned, the ins and outs of it, etc. So I'm excited for this journey and excited to capture more of this as we go along so until next time peace